First, feel free to camp if you wish to recover any lost hit points and spells. When you're ready to continue, click the Travel to New Area drop-down and select Number 3, Entrance to Nace, Road Northeast. Travel Alert, Using the Road, you travel northeast, taking two days to arrive, while significantly smaller than Kathleen, the capital city of Nace is still an impressive sight, a thriving metropolis protected by a sturdy wall of bleached stone that completely encircles the city, and nearby mountains to the north, west and south that further protects the capital. Approaching the city from the east, the main road continues northeast here toward the distant Nararian plains while the road south, and then west would take you back to Pirepa. Here we are. Ariana smiles, standing alongside Eswin and leading the party forward. So far so good. Perhaps, but let's have a quick look around first, Eswin returns, always wary. Ensuring the immediate area is safe and secure, the party marches west along a short entrance road, quickly reaching a gated area minutes later. Strangely enough, however, the portcullis marking the actual entrance into the city is raised, you're free to just enter the capital. What, exactly, are we looking for? Kartha wonders, all of you on guard and ready for anything. Vel just said that something strange is going on, Redfern answers, looking about. I imagine we will recognize what's wrong soon enough. Wait. Listen. Eswin shouts, halting the party's progress. While faint, you hear what sounds like a mix of animal cries and laughter, a strange mix you've never heard before. The sound is coming from the city entrance beyond, you've stumbled upon something unusual. Perhaps a quick conversation with the local guard here would be helpful. Two human guards here mostly just smile and laugh, not seeing you a threat in the least. Indeed, they tell you that all are welcome within Nace. And that you're free to do as you wish. Standing there within the entrance to Nace, the logical next step is to pass under the gate and forward into the city itself. As you move along, the two human guards continue to chuckle as if they don't have a care in the world. Travel alert, using the road, you travel west, taking 20 minutes to arrive, entering the capital city, none of you are prepared for what is going on all around. While Nace is mostly populated with humans, and a few humans do seem to be strolling about leisurely, the city seems overrun by slightly shorter, cat-faced humanoids that certainly aren't human. Hundreds of these creatures, perhaps thousands, all seem to be running about in playful chaos, many of them with mischievous smiles on their faces as if they are playing one gigantic game. GM note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details. None of the creatures have noticed you and you don't seem in any danger, but you can't believe what you're seeing. Utterly dumbfounded, you carefully watch the shenanigans as you search the local area. Again, it does not appear that these humanoid creatures mean any harm. Rather, it's as if they're small school children just released for recess and they're having incredible amounts of fun. Indeed, most of the creatures appear to be smiling as they dash about, chasing one another, playing with a variety of inanimate things and doing what, well, cats normally do. Just as puzzling, even the human guards here all have strange smiles on their faces, the activity beyond apparently not a problem to the guards in the least. Let's do a quick party intelligence check to see if anyone knows more about these misbehaving humanoids frolicking about here. Needing a 13 or less from your heroes, a 6 was rolled. Success, these are feline I believe, Kartha finally reports, recognizing the humanoid species. They can be vicious if they need to be, 
but normally they mind their own business and many are even honorable. Studying the creatures closer, most appear smaller than an average human with a decidedly cat-like face, feet, and tail but are otherwise humanoid in appearance. You also notice that there is quite the diversity amongst the individual creatures, some are short and stocky, others are tall and lean, and the coats of their fur are a variety of colors and patterns as well. Most of the creatures are running about on their two back legs just like a human, while others are frolicking about on all four legs like a cat. Your first interaction with these cat-like creatures, what would you like to do next, choose an option, inquire, talk to the human guards, interfere, stop a few of the creatures, just watch, continue to stand by and watch. There does not seem to be any rhyme nor reason to the chaos before you, these creatures are just having the time of their lives and you can't help but smile yourselves at their unbridled, happy spirits. You also notice that none of the humans here walking about seem to mind, even though the creatures occasionally knock them over, tear up some of the local vegetation and otherwise cause minor damage. Vel wasn't kidding about something odd going on here, Redfern remarks, a slight grin on his own face. At least they don't seem dangerous, Ariana adds, finding the scene almost adorable. I want to pet one. These aren't normal cats, Ariana, Kartha instructs, knowing better. They're intelligent beings, just like you and me. And this isn't their normal behavior. Perhaps the Lord of Nace knows something, Eswin suggests, pointing toward the power tower directly ahead of you in the distance to the west. Shall we? That's about all you can do here, Janet. Nace appears to be a smaller but more concentrated city than Kathleen, so there are plenty of areas here to explore. Still standing just outside the Nasian main gate, you can go west into the heart of the city or return east back through the gate and out of Nace. Travel alert, using the road, you travel west, taking 10 minutes to arrive, the road west here takes you into the city, intersecting with another larger road that appears to loop into a complete circle perhaps a quarter mile across. A wide variety of buildings, shops, and other areas line this roundabout, offering plenty of places to relax, re-equip and inquire. GM note, visit the smithy as soon as you can and update your armor, weapons, and shields, Situated directly within the large roundabout is a tall structure, the obvious power tower of the capital city. Home to Hope Air's socialistic government, dozens of feline here dash and frolic around as well, but it appears you could reach the tower without harm. A sign stands 10 feet away, several directional arrows pointing to the north and south. The sign reveals that the merchant, smithy, tavern, and casino can be found to the north, while the hostel, Sislan Church, library, and theater can be accessed to the south. Of course, there are more areas to visit within Nace than just those, be sure to explore the city extensively. Ow! Eswin suddenly cries out, instinctively raising a hand to his head. Turning to your right, it appears that the warrior was just struck in the head with a large fish head, several younger feline in the near distance laughing at the prank. You sense that the creatures don't mean any harm, but Eswin is definitely not amused. Why, those damn things, let's get them. Eswin cries, unsheathing his blade and turning in their direction. What do you do, choose an option, chase the feline, ignore the feline, insult the feline. The tolerance score for Janet remains the same, the juvenile creatures chuckle and then flee, far too fast for you to have caught them anyway. Best you let them go, Kartha advises, patting your shoulders. Let's not cause a scene. These feline don't seem to mean any real harm, Redfern observes, still concerned. But they're completely out of control. We need to find out what's going on, the Lord of Nace should know more. I am sure the Sislan Way would be a better source of information, Sainadir's counters, pointing to the southwest. Let's go visit the church first instead. Actually, a visit to the local tavern may yield more honest and complete answers than the city or church officials, Kartha suggests instead. For all we know, 
these officials could be the cause of this ruckus. Three different suggestions from three different points of view. Of course, you're free to not just follow their advice but go wherever you think is best. Standing at the intersection of the roundabout and the main road heading east back out of the city, you can proceed in any compass direction you wish. Travel alert, using the path, you travel west, taking 15 minutes to arrive, as your party approaches the power tower, it's clear that it's guarded by perhaps a dozen feline, and these humanoids don't appear to be laughing, happy or even amused. Bearing pole arms that could be deadly if used against you, the feline guards here take you quite seriously as you near. State your business. One of the feline guards demands, surprisingly tense compared to most of the other fun-loving feline you've encountered so far. What sort of response would you like to give to these impatient guards, choose an option, defensive, sorry, we will be on our way, neutral, we don't want any trouble, offensive, stand down, or we will hurt you. Janet permanently increases her diplomacy score by one point, not wanting to confront the feline guards but still needing answers, you elect to take a neutral stance, leaving your weapon secured but not turning to walk away either. Perhaps trained better than you expected, the guards here all remain defiant, their weapons up and ready for anything. The same squad leader then speaks again, addressing you personally. Lord Rustinian is not to be disturbed for any reason. Yeah, especially by a ragtag group of vagrants like you. Another female feline barks, the situation becoming more intense. Now leave, or incur the full wrath of the feline. Janet, let's do a charisma check on your hero to see if you can help lighten the mood here and perhaps get some answers at the same time. Needing a 12 or less from Janet, a 13 was rolled. Failure, attempting to compliment the feline here for their strong defense of the power tower, the words don't defuse the situation at all, the guards ready to attack you if you further the issue with them. And with that, the guards here all stand defiantly against your party, apparently ready to slice you into pieces should you push the issue any further. You'll need to try something else before you can get past all these feline warriors. Travel alert, using the path, you travel southeast, taking 10 minutes to arrive, the smaller but still magnificent construction before you is quiet, serene, and beautiful, another powerful example of how strongly the Sislans feel about themselves and their world-dominating religion. Sainayers grins as you approach the impressive double doors leading into the building. Quite surprisingly, however, those doors are locked, there appears to be no way in. What is this? St. Aetius cries, shocked. The church never shuts its doors. It is an odd situation. What do you do? Choose an option, break into the church through the doors, search the church exterior for clues, stop a nearby human and inquire. The church. A human passersby grins, surprised that your party would ask about it. They shut their doors just last week. I guess we don't need it anymore. I thought it was the policy of the Sislan way to be forever available to the people, Kartha inquires, doing her best to remain respectful. Yes, of course. Sainayers replies, the mere sound of Kartha's voice enough to make him snap back. I can't explain it either, I've never seen the church shut its doors, ever. Then we will need to seek answers elsewhere, S wind size. There is nothing for us here. GM note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, the doors to the church remain closed and locked, there is nothing more you can do here.
Travel alert, using the road, you travel east, taking five minutes to arrive, you have arrived within a large public hotel consisting of dozens of small but comfortable individual chambers, each providing warm beds, spacious tables, locking cabinets, and all the trimmings needed for a relaxing stay. Along with the hostel owner, however, a bunch of feline are here, playing as if they were outside and causing quite the commotion. Interestingly enough, the hostel owner does not seem to mind. Indeed, he seems to be actively involved in whatever games they are playing, and oblivious to your party. It takes a moment but you finally gain the man's attention, the hostel owner greeting your party with the largest of smiles. Ah, a fine adventuring party, here to stay the night? We charge just one silver piece. As he logs your name into his records, the owner is suddenly struck by some sort of water balloon, smack in the face. The balloon is actually made of animal intestines, causing quite the disgusting mess, but the manager just laughs it off as if nothing is wrong. These juvenile feline are quite something. How do you want to react to this little episode, choose an option, anger, tell the feline to stop. Humor, laugh along with the manager, tolerance, don't make a big deal of it. The spirit score for Janet remains the same, as you begin to laugh with the hostile owner, you turn back around toward the feline. In that instant, many of them stop for a moment and look at you, giving the entire party cute, kitty cat eyes. It's actually quite adorable and you laugh off the prank even harder, recognizing that the humanoids here don't mean any real harm. There are, intestines, all over your face, as when tries to point out, the joke almost lost on him. Yes. The hostel owner replies, wiping the slimy substance off with a handkerchief and a smile. And a darn good throw too, I might add. Several of the closer feline begin to meow in appreciation, the rest of them joining in moments later. Even the hostel owner gives his own loud meow before turning back to the party again, the whole situation absolutely bizarre. Now, about your rooms. I charge just one silver piece for the lot of you, the hostel owner offers, the price more than reasonable. You can stay as long as you wish, but if you leave and come back, I will have to charge another silver piece. Travel alert, using the road, you travel southwest, taking 5 minutes to arrive, this bizarre stone tower has typical furnishings while the walls are adorned with dozens of old paintings of great wizards and their deeds. After waiting for 10 minutes, however, nobody appears, apparently the guild has been abandoned. Giving the place a fairly thorough search, you confirm your initial assumption, for some reason, the guild has been abandoned and there is little more you can do here. Alas, the magic user's guild is empty and a waste of time. Additional guilds lie to the west, while the city's power tower, and all the buildings and shops that encircle it stands to the north. Travel alert, using the path, you travel northwest, Taking 10 minutes to arrive, you soon find the Nasian Public Library, an impressive structure recently built that seems to proudly reflect Hope Air culture and lore. As you gain entrance inside the building, however, you discover that it has been ransacked by the feline, virtually all the books have been pulled from their shelves, its many maps defaced and its historical treasures vandalized or even destroyed. The scene is actually heartbreaking, as it will likely take several seasons, perhaps even years, to fully restore the library to its original glory. The party does a cursory search, soon recognizing that it would take days, maybe even longer, to do any sort of thorough search within the debris. It's impossible to utilize this library in such a state, Redfern laments, shaking his head. If we focus our efforts and stick to a single topic, maybe we can learn more over the course of a half-day's search. 
the party agrees to dedicate the time necessary to research a single topic. What should it be? Choose an option, Feria and the Cislan way within NACE, history of the feline here within NACE, NACE, Hope Air, and its socialistic government. GM Note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, over the next 12 hours or so, you piece together the history of the feline race, that they are indigenous to Hope Air and are mysterious creatures. There had been a strong bond between the feline and the humans here occupying Hope Air that goes back at least to the Age of Damnation. However, you also discover that the relationship had started to wear thin recently, with some feline actually threatening to rebel until perhaps a season ago. Given the relative stability of the relationship between the humans and feline over the past 1000 years, you wonder what might have changed to threaten that relationship. The exhausting search complete, your heroes stand to their feet, about to depart. Wrapping up your research at the nearly destroyed city library, several of the party is taken by surprise as a half dozen or so feline suddenly appear from the shadows, their weapons drawn and their eyes remarkably angry. You're not used to seeing such a dangerous side to these creatures, and you wonder what's going on as the presumed leader of the pack steps forward to address you. We've been told there be spies here in Nace, and that we need to fix the problem. It appears these creatures have come here for one purpose, and it's not good for your health. How do you respond, choose an option, launch a preemptive attack, negotiate a truce, try to escape? While most intelligent humanoids will at least consider a potential truce, you're barely able to get a few words out before the feline here rush into attack. As the battle begins, you recognize that two of the feline appear to be magic users, already preparing spells against your party. Be careful, the magic about to be used against you combined with the number of feline here may pose quite the challenge. Your party is under attack. Facing the entire party are five feline soldiers, two feline magic users and one feline leader. Feline soldier number three attacks Oriana with his longsword needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 10, plus 2 to hit, feline soldier number three misses Oriana. It's Oriana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at feline soldier number three, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 14, plus four to hit, Ariana hits feline soldier number three, doing seven points of damage and defeating him. It's C. Nyers' turn. What do you want him to do? St. Nyers readies his quarter staff plus one and swings at feline soldier number one, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 7, plus 4 to hit, St. Aeus misses feline soldier number 1. Feline soldier number 4 attacks Ariana with his longsword needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage, feline soldier number 4 hits Ariana, slashing her for 12 points of damage and leaving Ariana with 12 hit points. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet casts cause light wounds on feline magic user number 2, wounding him for 7 points of damage, needing a 13 or greater, feline magic user number 2 rolls a 9 and fails versus spells. It's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern readies his sling and fires at feline magic user number 2, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 11, plus 1 to hit, Redfern missed. Arth readies his short bow and fires at feline magic user number 2, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 8, S. Win readies his short bow and fires at feline magic user number 2, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 18, plus 2 to hit, S. Win hits feline magic user number 2, doing 5 points of damage and defeating him. Feline leader attacks Oriana with his longsword plus 1 needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 17, plus 5 to hit, feline leader hits Oriana, slashing her for 9 points of damage and leaving Oriana with 3 hit points. 
Feline soldier number 5 attacks Eswin with his longsword needing an 18 to hit. Die roll is a 19, plus 2 to hit, Feline soldier number 5 hits Eswin, slashing him for 9 points of damage and leaving Eswin with 16 hit points. Feline magic user casts web on roughly half of the party, potentially immobilizing them, Janet avoids the effect altogether, Ariana is not held, needing a 11 or greater, Ariana rolls a 20 and saves versus spells, Barthol avoids the effect altogether, Eswin avoids the effect altogether, Kartha avoids the effect altogether, Redfern is not held, needing a 13 or greater, Redfern rolls a 13 and sa it's Kartha's turn. What do you want her to do? Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her for 8 hit points. Feline Soldier number 1 attacks Janet with his longsword needing a 18 to hit. Feline Soldier number 2 attacks Janet with his longsword needing a 18 to hit. GM Note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, it's Janet. Janet readies her mace plus 1 and swings at Feline Soldier number 1, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 14, plus 4 to hit. Janet hits Feline Soldier number 1, doing 10 points of damage and defeating him. Feline magic user casts sleep on Redfern, potentially putting him to sleep but ineffective, Redfern is too high of level and is immune to sleep. It's Kartha's turn. What do you want her to do? Kartha readies her quarter staff plus 1 and swings at Feline Soldier number 4, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 2 plus 4 to hit, it's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at Feline Soldier number 4. Redfern casts web on roughly half of all encountered combatants, attempting to immobilize them in sticky goo. Feline leader is held for a few minutes, needing a 15 or greater, Feline leader rolls a 4 and fails versus spells, Feline magic user number 1 avoids the attack altogether, Feline soldier number 2 is held for a few minutes, needing a 6, Arthal readies his short bow and fires at Feline magic user number 1, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 6, plus 3 to hit, Eswin readies his longsword plus 1 and swings at Feline soldier number 4, needing a 14 to hit. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, Sainayers readies his quarter staff plus one and swings at Feline Soldier number four. Kartha readies her sling and fires at Feline Magic user number one, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a seven. Janet readies her sling and fires at Feline Magic user number one, needing a 13 to hit. Barthol leaps forward and engages with Feline Magic user number one in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's Sainayers' turn. What do you want him to do? Sainayers readies his quarter staff plus one and swings at Feline Magic user number one, needing a 13 to hit. Eswin readies his longsword plus 1 and swings at Feline magic user number 1, needing a 13 to hit. Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at Feline magic user number 1, needing a th Redfern readies his golden quarter staff plus 1 and swings at Feline magic user number 1, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage. Redfern hits Feline magic user number 1, doing 14 points of damage and defeating him. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 100 experience points. With the feline defeated, the library has grown quiet again. You're still surprised that these otherwise docile and even fun-loving creatures would attack you like this, without even asking to negotiate. Now that you have the upper hand, what would you like to do? Choose an option, forgive the feline and let them go, lecture the feline and embarrass them, question the feline for all they know. GM note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, seeing an opportunity, you ask Sainayers and Kartha to nurse the wounds of the feline in return for a reason why they attacked your party in the first place. The creatures refuse to answer at first, but as they leave, their tails, literally between their legs, one of them mumbles something about their leader Flavid perhaps being a bit wrong about your party. The library now a bust, there is little for you to do here, it's time to move on.
Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her for 8 hit points. St. Aetius casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 6 hit points. Travel alert, using the path, you travel south, taking 10 minutes to arrive, this sacred temple is decorated with rich tapestries, holy symbols, and a variety of other religious artifacts, an obvious structure dedicated to the faithful. Shortly after you arrive, a devout human priest dressed in flowing brown robes approaches you from a nearby altar and asks whether you've come to recruit a new cleric henchman into your adventuring party, choose an option, no, we're not here for that, yes, we're looking to add a new cleric. That's good, the cleric says matter-of-factly, not all that interested in speaking with you. We don't have anyone here who could join your party anyway. A city the size of Nace should have a few cleric acolytes here waiting to be hired, St. Aetius comments, looking about. Where is everyone? I wish I knew, the priest responds, looking about himself for a few moments. They all disappeared over the past few weeks, I am the only one left. The human cleric here seems to be one of the very rare people you've met so far in Nace who isn't acting strangely. Perhaps you'd like to ask him a question, choose an option, why are the feline running amok? Have you heard from the cleric fairy lately? Have you visited the power tower lately? GM note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, it's a mystery to me, the cleric responds with a frown. All was well within Nace until just a few weeks ago. First, the human citizens began to act strangely, then the feline stopped serving all of us and began having their way throughout the city, apparently free to do as they wish. I don't understand it at all. Is there anything else you can tell us? Kartha inquires, one cleric to another. I am afraid you will have to discern the secret of Nace for yourselves, the human priest responds. In the meantime, if any of you are in need of healing, have afflictions to do away with or even need restoration services from a recent energy drain, I can help. If anyone in the party has recently been afflicted with something or, worse, level drained, here is an opportunity to do something about that. The cleric looks to you rather impatiently, waiting for someone to request his services. Ariana lost five gold pieces. In return, she is fully healed. The cleric looks to you rather impatiently, waiting for someone to request his services. Eswin lost 15 electrum pieces. In return, he is fully healed. The cleric looks to you rather impatiently, waiting for someone to request his services. Travel alert, using the path, you travel west, taking 5 minutes to arrive, this larger building is decorated with armor, weapons, and all the instruments of combat. Expecting a fighter guild master to appear and help you with the potential hiring of a new fighter or fighter magic user into your party, you're disappointed after 10 minutes or so when nobody actually appears to help you. After a thorough search, it's clear that the fighter's guild has been abandoned, there is little you can do here except leave. GM note, it's dark here. Click the use item button to select a source of light, the fighter's guild is empty and a waste of your time. A seminary exists immediately to the east, while the city's power tower, and all the buildings and shops that encircle it stands to the north.
Travel alert, using the path, you travel north, taking 10 minutes to arrive, one of the more elegant and respected buildings within the city, the theater here provides not only daily entertainment but potential information, factual lore sometimes intended to inform as well as entertain. Of course, someone will need to pay the 5 gold coin admittance fee for the entire party. Sorry, but Janet does not have enough coin. So you know, your player character is responsible for all such payments on behalf of the party, so you will need to come up with additional funds first in order to pay this. However, you can transfer coinage from your other heroes to your own if necessary. GM Note, Janet lost 5 gold pieces, coins are exchanged and you're allowed entrance into the theater. Immediately you see dozens and dozens of felines scattered about the entire interior of the theater, continuing their playful antics but settled down enough to at least pay attention to the play that is about to start. Reviewing the theater's colorful interior, it occurs to you that where you sit with the feline may be just as important as the performance itself. Which area of the theater would you like to watch the play from, choose an option, back row, try to stay out of sight, front row, be close to the actors, rafters, join the feline up near the ceiling. Let's try climbing up into the rafters, Ariana suggests, your hero leading the way toward a wooden ladder, itself leading up toward a simple matrix of wooden beams crisscrossing just below the ceiling of the building. Locating the wooden ladder leading up, the party soon makes its way up into the rafters, carefully negotiating the crisscrossing lattice of strong beams that help hold the ceiling in place. As you mingle amongst the dozen or so feline camped out up here, they watch you with both surprise and suspicion, why are you here? Let's do a party charisma check. Needing a 14 or less from your heroes, a 16 was rolled. Failure, are we having fun yet? Ariana shouts with a large grin, actually enjoying the vantage point you've selected. Apparently not impressed, the feline here soon distance themselves from you, retreating back into the shadows and basically leaving you alone. The lights go down, the feline settle down and the play begins. For the next hour you watch as the feline performers tell the story of how their relationship with humanity over the centuries was far more one-sided than most Nasians would think, and how the feline were more slaves than companions over time. While not graceful or eloquent by any stretch, the feline actors still do an admirable job of communicating what life was like for their race, and how, at this point, they deeply resent all that has happened to them. A particularly moving element of the production is the frustration of not being able to communicate with one's captors. Let's do a spirit check on your hero to see how Janet feels about that. Needing a 13 or less from Janet, a 14 was rolled. Failure, watching the play, it occurs to you that, perhaps, it may be a bit frustrating to be unable to complain against those who would control or even enslave you. However, the feline have been close companions of the humans for centuries, so you really don't understand the message of the play. The play ends, the actors continuing to focus on the idea that, for centuries, they have been at best mistreated by the humans and, at worst, enslaved, and all they want now is some equality, respect, and justice. The feline audience then begins to shout, meow and stomp their feet in complete agreement and appreciation of the play, the noise around you almost deafening. How would you like to respond to the feline cheer all around you, choose an option, applaud, shout your own approval as well, do nothing, ignore the feline approval, walk away, avoid any further interaction. More or less understanding the story of the feline and in support of them, you stand to your feet and begin cheering as well, Ariana, Kartha and Redfern following suit. Amidst the thunder of the stomping and the meowing of the feline, you suddenly feel a strange sensation, a sort of waking dream that almost wants to invade your mind. Your instinct at first is to repel the sensation, dismissing it perhaps as an illusion or even magical attack. Yet there is something reassuring to the experience, a voice that wants to help, and so you listen to hear what the voice might be telling you. GM Note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, your heart willing to take a chance, you allow the voice to speak. 
Janet, come see me, the blind fortune teller to the north of you. I can help. The feline then start to throw around whatever is available and the situation escalates out of control, objects flying everywhere. This is probably the time to make a quick exit out of the theater. Indeed, so much stuff is being thrown about by so many feline that you will need to do a party dexterity check to ensure that your heroes all safely depart. Needing a 13 or less from your heroes, a 5 was rolled. Success, yes, luckily all of you escaped the craziness in one piece, finding yourselves back outside moments later. That's probably the last time you will need to visit the theater. The doors are locked and the area is silent, you've witnessed the last show for a while. Travel alert, using the path, you travel west, taking 10 minutes to arrive, this place appears almost totally underground and is filled with all manner of tricks, traps and murals depicting the seedier side of the world. Out of nowhere, a clever feline thief silently appears and asks whether you've come to recruit a new thief into your party, choose an option, no, we don't need to recruit a thief, yes, we could use another thief. You would turn down the likes of me? The feline grins, apparently seeing herself as the greatest thief who has ever lived. Then your loss, foolish adventurers. But I will make you a deal, the feline thief continues, stepping over to a nondescript section of wall within the guild. For 25 gold pieces, I will tell you how to find the black market, where you can buy and sell items of significant value. What do you say? The thief holds out her paw, expecting payment. GM note, Janet lost 5 platinum pieces, appreciate doing business with you, the feline thief replies, taking your gold. Without looking, the feline then pushes on a particular brick in the wall and activates a secret door. Moments later, an entrance into another large chamber is revealed, a variety of torches providing more than adequate light to see by. You're being invited into an underground black market. However, the way forward looks dangerous, so you may want to search it first. Taking a few minutes, the party searches the black market entrance, ensuring that the way forward is safe and secure. The feline thief smiles and then walks away, her business with you complete. The secret tunnel south to the black market beyond awaits. Alternatively, you can leave the thieves guild and head back into the city. Travel alert, using the secret door, you travel south, taking a few moments to arrive, entering the underground bunker, a dozen felines stand in strategic places all about, guarding the many treasures within the chamber and watching you suspiciously. As you move about, it does not take long before several of the more dominating humanoids approach, spoiling for a fight. Your kind is not welcome here, one of the feline beasties calls out, almost immediately supported by several other feline. We don't like you. What do you think about that? What do you think, Janet? How do you react to these feline ruffians? Choose an option, diplomacy, we can work this out. Empathy, let's not hurt one another. Optimism, let's party together. Opting for empathy, you try to explain how getting into a fight will only result in pain and loss for both sides. Let's do an empathy check on your hero and see what happens. Needing a 12 or less from Janet, a 2 was rolled. Success, it takes a few tense moments, but then the feline assassins back down, perhaps recognizing that the pain would not be worth the gain. Well done, another feline offers as he approaches, somewhat impressed. You've earned the right to buy and sell to me. I am expensive, but I likely have merchandise you won't find anywhere else. You've met the black market merchant, someone you can buy and sell anything worth at least 100 gold pieces from. Feel free to buy and sell as you wish.
the feline merchant acknowledges your transaction, eager to do additional business if desired. Of course, the assassins you encountered moments ago continue to watch your every move, ready to pounce if you do anything stupid here. You're free to buy and sell as you wish. When you're done, the lone secret exit to the north will take you back to the Thieves' Guild. Janet sells two amethysts and receives the equivalent of 400 gold pieces. Janet sells three potions of fire resistance and receives the equivalent of 480 gold pieces. Ariana sells one topaz and receives the equivalent of 120 gold pieces. Barthol sells one ornate dagger plus one and receives the equivalent of 100 gold pieces. Eswin sells one short sword plus one and receives the equivalent of 100. Redfern sells one quarter staff plus one and receives the equivalent of 100 gold pieces. Travel alert, using the unlocked door, you travel north, taking a few moments to arrive, the secret tunnel south to the black market beyond awaits. Alternatively, you can leave the thieves guild and head back into the city. Travel alert, using the path, you travel northwest, taking 10 minutes to arrive, looking west, you can see that the road before you leads into a heavily populated section of the city, hundreds of buildings and dozens of city streets where most of the people of Nace actually live. Given that you're not here to visit anyone within the capital's residential district, however, you have no reason to continue past this point. Travel alert, using the path, you travel north, taking 15 minutes to arrive, Stepping into this smaller establishment, you see a variety of human townsfolk surrounding several fine tables, three windowed slot machine contraptions resting atop each table. An occasional shout is heard as someone either wins or loses a modest sum of gold, this place is definitely a gambling establishment. Let's do a curiosity check on your hero to see if you notice anything else here. Needing a 14 or less from Janet, a 8 was rolled. Success, it's not hard to notice there aren't any feline here. You deduce that the feline probably don't understand the concept of gambling all that much, or otherwise just aren't interested in it. Moments later, a man you presume to be the casino owner or pit boss approaches you, a silly grin on his face like most of the other humans you've encountered here in Nay so far. The younger man tells a joke about dark elves and the weather, then holds out his hand, expecting a gold piece in payment for entering and playing the magical devices here. GM note, Janet lost 10 silver pieces, looking about, the casino is populated by a variety of magical slot machines, each with three windows that randomly display a fruit, apple, orange, or banana or an X symbol. Match any two fruits and you double your wager. Match any three fruits and you win five times your bet. Receive three X symbols and you win the jackpot, 50 times your bet. Good luck. Open slot machines stand all about you, just begging to take your hard-earned gold.
Janet tries her luck at one of the machines, wagering 10 gold coins. The three windows display, two fruits. Janet wins twice her bet, total of 20 gold coins. Not bad. So far, you've won a grand total of 20 gold pieces, you're on a roll, so don't stop now. Janet tries her luck at one of the machines, wagering 10 gold coins. The three windows display, no matches. Sorry, but Janet lost her bet. So far, you've won a grand total of 10 gold pieces, you're on a roll. Janet tries her luck at one of the machines, wagering 10 gold coins. The three windows display, no matches. Sorry, but Janet lost her bet. At the moment, Travel alert, using the path, you travel southeast, taking 15 minutes to arrive, after passing by a few well-equipped feline guards, you stand just outside a small but secure bank. If you wish to enter and make a deposit, retrieve saved funds or acquire a small loan, you will need to pay a small silver piece entrance fee. GM note, Janet lost 10 copper pieces, you pay the entrance fee and enter the bank, its door magically secure and its interior cozy yet official. A nearby sign reads deposits, withdraws and loans while several booths stand before you where human clerks await to conduct business. Only you can obtain a loan, up to 10 platinum per level and that you will have to pay back double what you borrow. Janet lost 419 platinum pieces and 5 gold pieces. Janet now has 540 platinum pieces saved away in the bank. Simply return to any bank within the world at any time to withdraw these funds, subject to a 1 gold piece transaction fee. Janet withdraws 54 platinum pieces from the bank. That leaves her with 486 platinum pieces banked. Note that the transaction itself cost 1 gold piece. Travel alert, using the road. You travel south, taking 5 minutes to arrive, the shop here appears cluttered with all manner of containers, made mostly of glass and each containing some strange powder or liquid. A young feline woman immediately stands as you enter the building, apparently quite eager to do business with you. Are you in need of a potion or two? The transaction commences and the feline here politely thanks you for your business. You folks aren't from around these parts, are you? The feline inquires, enthusiastic. Say, can I interest you in our eau de litter box, some scented oil for the discerning kitty? No self-respecting feline would go without this stuff, so buy some from me and be liked and well received within Nace. Just 10 gold per jar. The feline alchemist opens a jar of the stuff, its yellow color initially pleasing. The smell, however, is terrible, like a creature's strongest urine, and you immediately ask the feline to cover the jar again. Unless there is a specific reason to buy the oil, you don't want anything to do with it. Who on Sisilus would want to buy that? Eswin laments, thoroughly disgusted by the substance. The feline probably find it pleasant, even delightful, Kartha suggests with a bit of a smile. Who are we to judge? The feline alchemist remains ready to buy and sell potions to you, and even the ode the litter box if you're so inclined. Travel alert, using the road. You travel north, taking 5 minutes to arrive, after passing by a few well-equipped travel alert, using the road, 
you travel north, taking 10 minutes to arrive, arriving at a small but highly decorated wooden building, you can see humanoid shapes moving about within, which seems a bit odd for a place typically inhabited by a single individual. Checking the door, you find it partially ajar, which also seems strange. Making your way inside, it does not take long to find a handful of feline surrounding a young, attractive human woman, some sort of clothing wrapped about her head. These felines seem dark and more ominous than most you've encountered this far and they appear to be threatening the woman. Let's do an intelligence check on your hero to see if you can grasp what is going on. Needing a 13 or less from Janet, a 11 was rolled. Success, the feline here are thieves, warriors, or even assassins, and it appears you've arrived just in time to likely spare the woman here some significant pain, or worse. The half dozen or so feline turn in your direction, looking you over as enemies. One of them points at your party as the rest then raise their weapons to attack. There you are. Well silence the lot of you and then take the fortune teller underground. Your party is under attack. Coming at all of you are six feline assassins. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at feline assassin number four, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a two, plus four to hit, Ariana misses fell, needing a 30 or less on percentile dice, a 50 is rolled. Failure, Eswin readies his long sword plus one and swings at feline assassin number four, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 14, plus five to hit, Eswin hits feline assassin number four, doing 10 points of damage. Feline assassin number 5 attacks Ariana with his short sword plus 1 needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does dub. Feline assassin number 6 attacks Eswin with his short sword, it's Red Fern's turn. What do you want him to do? Red Fern casts magic missile on Feline assassin number 1, striking him with a magic missile for 7 points of damage. It's Janet's turn. What? Janet casts spiritual hammer on feline assassin number one, bashing him for three points of damage for five minutes. It's Kartha's turn. What do you want her to do? Kartha readies her quarter staff plus one and swings at feline assassin number one, needing a feline assassin number three attacks as win with his short sword. It's Nyers's turn. What do you want him to do? GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, Sainadius readies his quarter staff plus one and swings at feline assassin number five, needing a 15 to hit. Needing a 30 or less on percentile dice, a 40 is rolled. Failure. Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at feline assassin number five, needing a 15 to hit. Sainadius readies his quarter staff plus one and swings at feline assassin number five. Kartha readies her quarter staff plus one and swings at feline assassin number five. Feline assassin number six attacks Eswin with his short sword plus one needing an 18 to hit. It's Red Fern's turn. What? Red Fern casts magic missile on feline assassin number two, striking him with a magic missile for five. Eswin readies his long sword plus one and swings at feline assassin number six needing a 15 to hit. Janet directs her spiritual hammer at feline assassin number 2, bashing him for 1 point of damage and leaving him. Janet readies her mace plus 1 and swings at feline assassin number 2, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 6, plus 4 to hit. Janet misses feline assassin number 2. Feline assassin number 3 attacks Eswin with his short sword plus 1 needing an 18 to hit. Die roll is a 16, plus 4 to hit. Feline assassin number 3 hits Eswin, partially mildly poisoning him for 6 points of damage, needing a 7 or greater, Eswin rolls a 14 and saves for half damage versus death ray or poison. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at feline assassin number 2, needing a 15. Janet readies her mace plus 1 and swings at feline assassin number 2, needing a 15 to hit. Sainadius readies his quarter staff plus 1 and swings at feline assassin number 6, Needing, Janet directs her spiritual hammer at feline assassin number 6, bashing him for 2 points of death. Eswin readies his long sword plus 1 and swings at feline assassin number 3, Kartha readies her quarter staff plus 1 and swings at feline assassin number 6, needing a 15 to hit. 
Redfern readies his golden quarter staff plus one and swings at feline assassin no Barthol readies his short sword plus one and swings at feline assassin number three, needing a 15 to hit. The GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is roll, Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at feline assassin number three, needing a 15 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage, Ariana hits feline assassin number three, doing 14 points of damage and defeating him. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 64 experience points. The feline assassins are defeated and you drive them away, the creatures cursing you as they flee. You must be the adventuring party that has come to Nace recently, the younger woman assumes, picking herself up off the floor. Had you arrived just minutes later, they would have already taken me away. The woman reaches out, feeling her way back to a nearby table. The closest hero to her, Eswin grabs her arm and guides her to an adjacent chair, the woman nodding in approval as she sits down, asking all of you to do the same. Let's do an empathy check on your hero and see how you feel about the blind human here. Needing a 12 or less from Janet, a 18 was rolled. Failure, clearly blind and apparently unable to protect herself, your first impression is that the woman here is basically powerless, perhaps even a charlatan when it comes to providing accurate advice, and you wonder if you're just wasting your time here. I am Lynn and I've lived here in Nace all my life, the fortune teller begins, turning her head at times as if talking to each of you. One does not need to be a fortune teller to know that all is not well here. I don't know everything, but I can tell you what I do know for, say, 100 gold. You save the woman from being kidnapped and now she wants your money. That seems backward. Your response, choose an option, agree to pay the 100 gold pieces, barter and offer just 60 gold pieces, criticize, offer nothing and demand answers. The party's reputation score permanently increases by one point, an honorable party no less, I am impressed. The blind woman returns, clearly surprised. No, keep your money, it's me who should be paying you. Everything was fine until just a few weeks ago, when most of the citizens within Nace began to act very strangely, as if they no longer had a care in the world, Lynn continues, recollecting the recent past. Within the span of just a few days, nearly everyone throughout the city started behaving like the feline are behaving right now. Yes, we've witnessed their behavior firsthand now several times, Eswin laments, dissatisfied. I don't like it one bit. The feline, too, have changed, Lin responds, still unsure of what happened. They were once loyal servants of Nace, happy to do anything we asked, even honored. Now, they don't want any part of our centuries-long bond together. They just want to be, choose an option, annoying. Side with Eswin, free. Side with Kartha, mischievous. Side with Lin. Yes. Kartha almost shouts, agreeing fully with your response. All living things should be free, why not the feline? Now, a few of us did not change for some reason. Along with myself, Supreme Healer Priest Feria never lost her wits, trying desperately to first understand and then resolve the mystery as to why everyone was behaving so strangely. Soon, however, the feline were actively interfering with Feria and myself, and a few days ago Feria simply disappeared, I haven't seen her since. Has she been, silenced permanently you think? Sainayers asks, almost afraid to do so. Gazing into the soul of Lin, Let's have your hero do a wisdom check to see if you can learn something unspoken from the blind woman. Needing a 14 or less from Janet, a 15 was rolled. Failure, you study Lin for a moment but nothing comes to mind. So, you press her for more information. I believe she's been taken against her will, Lin continues, her tone more serious. I can hear her in my dreams late at night reaching out to me, begging for help. I don't know where she is, but she's alive and in need of rescue. So where, exactly, should we start looking for her? Eswin responds, the obvious question. Lin smirks, 
choosing to go silent, apparently, she wants you to suggest an obvious place to start looking. How do you respond, choose an option, power tower, residential district, Sislan church. Lynn nods affirmatively, smiling as if you'd just passed some sort of unspoken test. The feline control the power tower now, so that's likely where they've taken her. Each hero earns 143 experience points. Barthol has gained a new energy level and receives 4 new hit points. The power tower is guarded, Ariana offers, relatively silent until now. They've already warned us to stay away. Agreed, there is no getting past the feline guards, Eswin confirms. At least not without bloodshed. I believe there may be a way. One moment. The blind woman stands, pivots, and slowly shuffles forward, finding a small glass ball resting on an ornate wooden table. She then takes the orb and returns to the party, handing it to you as if a gift. This is an orb of invisibility, which will work one time and can get your party past the guards, Lin begins, handing you a small treasure by itself. But it won't be enough, they won't see you, but they will smell you. So you will also need something to cover the smell of your own bodies if you want to get past the feline. That's a strange requirement. Let's do a party intelligence check to see if anyone knows how to mask your own scent. Needing a 13 or less from your heroes, a 15 was rolled. Failure, the room goes silent for several long moments, nobody with any initial ideas. The city alchemist had that incredibly smelly stuff, the Ode to Litter Box I think she called it, Redfern continues, recalling your recent visit there. She had several dozen jars of the stuff, it shouldn't be hard to acquire. The blind woman nods her head and softly smiles, convinced you're on the right track now. GM note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, then away you go, heroes, Lin commands as she stands to escort all of you to the front door. Find your way into the power tower, discover what is happening here in Nace and rescue Feria if you can. The fortune teller has done all she can for you and needs to rest. It's time to return to the city and be on your way. <laughs>